Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNO Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Law, SOL, Postgraduate Diploma in Intellectual Property Rights, PGDIPR, MIP, 104 Trademarks, Domain Names Geographical Indications, Block 1 Trademark Sci, Unit 4 Trademark Assignment and Licensing, 4.1 Introduction, Trademarks are a species of property the ownership of which can change for different reasons and in different ways. Trademark rights may, on a natural, person's death, pass to his aid. Similarly, a trademark may pass to a new owner point in the case of bankruptcy. Another automatic change of ownership may result from the merging of two companies. No automatic change takes place. However, in the case of a company takeover effected by the acquisition of shares or when certain assets of a company, including the intellectual property rights, are acquired, assignments and licenses represent that kind of change of ownership of trademarks which is contractual in nature. Assignment is similar to selling a mark while a license can be analogized with renting a mark. Assignment and licensing is possible in case of both registered and unregistered marks. This unit explains legal requirements of DAS instruments together with various business practices that are dependent on trademark licensing 4.2 objectives. After going through this unit, you should be able to times elaborate the meaning and process of trademark licenses Times explain the importance of trademark assignment and the requirements involved therein. Describe the concept and importance of franchising. Times describe different types of structures for carrying out franchising. Times explain the concept and types of merchandising. And times describe how licensing of trademarks is important for technology transfer. 4.3 Licensing and Assignment in General Assignment and licensing are two forms of transfer whereby the proprietor of a trademark can invite others to exploit his trademark. The common feature of both these transfers is that the legal instrument used in both these transfers is contract. In other words, contract is the means by which a license or assignment is effected. These assignments and licenses are interpreted in substantially the same way as any other contract. This makes it important that all the legal requirements for a binding and enforceable contract are complied with. The word license has been derived from the Latin term licentia meaning freedom or liberty. To license or grant license is to give permission. So, a license is the Formal granting of permission by someone who owns rights to someone else to use them. A license is a promise not to sue a party for actions that would otherwise constitute infringement. In other words, a license is permission to make use till the F. Another's trademark under carefully laid out conditions and terms. A license, therefore, passes no interest but merely makes lawful that which would otherwise be unlawful. A license is the transfer of trademark which does not affect the monopoly of the owner except by stopping him from exercising his prohibitory powers in derogation of privileges conferred upon licensee as a matter of law. A license is a grant of rights that represent less than all of the rights which would accompany full ownership. In a license there is no transfer of proprietary interest because by licensing the owner retains ownership to the rights to that intellectual property and thus retains proprietary control over it. Simply put, a license grants the licensee rights in property without transferring ownership of the property. Modern licensing practices often entail many active commitments by the licensor and equally dynamic expectations by the licensee regarding his ability to use the licensed trademark. Accordingly, the extent of rights granted in a license may span from a mere permission to use the licensed property in some limited manner, 
नॉन एक्सक्लूसिव लाइसेंस टू ऑल बट ओनरशिप ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी एक्सक्लूसिव लाइसेंस सो लाइसेंसेज कैन बी एक्सक्लूसिव और नॉन एक्सक्लूसिव इन द केस ऑफ एन एक्सक्लूसिव लाइसेंस द ट्रेडमार्क प्रोपराइटर इज नॉट अलाउड टू लाइसेंस द मार्क टू एनी अदर पर्सन इन फेटेरिटरी एंड कैन नॉट इवन यूज द मार्क हिमसेल्फ इन द केस ऑफ अ नॉन एक्सक्लूसिव लाइसेंस ऑफ कोर्स द प्रोपराइटर मे यूज द मार्क हिमसेल्फ एंड इवन अलाउ अदर्स टू यूज इट इन द केस ऑफ मल्टीपल लाइसेंसेज वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट क्वालिटी कंट्रोल इज नेसेसरी इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ कंज्यूमिंग पब्लिक exclusive as well as non exclusive licenses can be concluded for the whole territory of a country or part of it and they can cover all or some only of the goods for which the trademark is registered it is common practice for a trademark owner to license third parties to use the trademarks locally in the country where they exercise their own business however The main importance of the possibility of licensing the use of trademarks lies in its usefulness in international business relations. Licensing is indeed the principal means whereby the trademarks of foreign companies are used by local businesses because of the diversity in its scope. It may be difficult to quantify the extent of this activity, but it definitely is a multi-billion dollar activity that pervades the ways in which goods and services are manufactured and marketed both domestically and internationally the term assignment is defined as a transfer or making over to another of the whole of any property real or personal in possession or in dot action or of any a state or right therein what assignment is to trademarks sale is to tangible property in that sense they can be analogized trademarks are transmissible by assignment as personal or movable property by assigning his trademark to another the owner transfers his legal title to the assignee in assignment the ownership rights of the trademark pass from seller to buyer and it is a one time activity usually assignment involves compensation in the form of a lump sum payment till the in one go but it might also be deferred to be made dependent on certain factors such as the success of the commercialization of the transferred intellectual property a license is usually point compensated by payment of periodic payments called royalties over the term of license however there is no hard and fast rule as to that so at times a licensor may get lump sum and an assigner may get royalties 4.4 trademark licensing under license the owner of trademark is giving permission to place his mark on manufactured goods or services belonging to someone else dot the licensor continues to own the mark and the use of it by the licensee in yours to the benefit of the licensor while copyright and patent laws are intended to encourage creativity in art and innovation the primary function of trademark law is to protect consumers from possible confusion or deception if use of trademarks were unregulated a trademark indicates the source or origin of a product or service and hence allows consumers to make generalizations regarding their quality in the process Trademarks serve as business identifiers and become a valuable property of the owner. This dual function of trademarks as an indicator of source and as a valuable property goes to define the structure of trademark licensing, comma, the Trademarks Act 1999 is the law governing trademarks in India. A trademark owner's ability to license out the use of his trademark has been explicitly incorporated in the trademarks act this aspect of licensing could be appreciated by dividing it into two parts with licensing of registered trademarks and licensing of unregistered trademarks while the trademarks act contains elaborate provisions as to licensing of registered trademark it is silent about licensing of an unregistered trademark but courts have declared such licensing to be valid
एंड कवर्ड बाय कॉमन लॉ एस गुजरात बॉटलिंग को लिमिटेड वी कोका कोला को ए आई आर से ट्वेंटी फर्दर लाइसेंसिंग ऑफ रजिस्टर्ड ट्रेडमार्क्स हैज टू एस्पेक्ट्स वन वेयर द लाइसेंस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज रजिस्टर्ड अंडर द ट्रेडमार्क्स एक्ट एंड द अदर वेयर द लाइसेंस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज नॉट सो रजिस्टर्ड सेक्शन टू वन आर ऑफ द एक्ट डिफाइंस द एक्सप्रेशन परमिटेड यूज व्हिच इंक्लूड्स यूज ऑफ अ ट्रेडमार्क बाय बोथ रजिस्टर्ड एंड अनरजिस्टर्ड लाइसेंसीज वेयर द लाइसेंस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज रजिस्टर्ड अंडर द ट्रेडमार्क्स एक्ट द लाइसेंसी इज नोन एज रजिस्टर्ड यूजर Registration of a licensee as a registered user is not compulsory under the Act, and the licensing of a registered trademark without registering the licensee as registered user is governed by the provisions of the Trademarks Act as well as common law. The recordation of license in this manner is permissive rather than mandatory. But significant advantages stem out of such recordal of the license. 4.4.1 purpose of trademark licensing the licensor may have limited resources but through licensing out he can venture in fresh woods and new pastures exposing his mark to newer national and international markets moreover owners of well known marks can venture out in newer product areas in which they had no experience through licensing the licensor can expand the territory in which the mark is used and hence become eligible for expanded protection from the licensee's perspective a license allows the licensee to ride on the goodwill of trademark and offers him an opportunity to benefit from the licensor's reputation in attracting and convincing consumers and to market his products and services the licensee is therefore spared the expenses of establishing brand awareness 4.4.2 procedure for registration as registered user the procedure for registration as registered user under a trademark license is provided under section 491 of trademarks act which is as follows registration as registered user where it is proposed that a person should be registered as a registered user of a trademark the registered proprietor and the proposed registered user shall jointly applying writing to the registrar in the prescribed manner and every such application shall be accompanied by the agreement in writing or a duly authenticated copy thereof entered into between the registered proprietor and the proposed registered user with respect to the permitted use of trademark and b an affidavit made by the registered proprietor or by some person authorized to the satisfaction of the registrar to act on his behalf giving particulars of the relationship existing or proposed between the registered proprietor and the proposed registered user including particulars showing the degree of control by the proprietor over the permitted use which their relationship will confer and whether it is a term of their relationship that the proposed registered user shall be the dot sole registered user or that there shall be any other restriction as to persons for whose registration as registered users application may be made to stating the goods or services in respect of which registration is proposed three stating the conditions or restrictions if any proposed with respect to the characteristics of the goods or services to the mode or place of permitted use or to any other matter for stating whether the permitted use is to be for a period or without limit of period and if for a period the duration thereof and c such further documents or other evidence as may be required by the registrar or as may be prescribed the provision typically requires o a joint application by the registered proprietor and the proposed licensee tilde o a written contract entered into between the parties specifying the conditions under which the registered proprietor proposes to permit the use of the mark and o an affidavit by or on behalf of the registered proprietor providing details as 
टू टाइम्स रिलेशनशिप सब्सिस्टिंग और प्रोपोज बिटवीन द पार्टीज द डिग्री ऑफ कंट्रोल टू बी एक्सरसाइज बाय द प्रोपराइटर ओवर परमिटेड यूज टाइम्स द फैक्ट ऑफ सोल रजिस्टर्ड यूजर और मल्टीपल रजिस्टर्ड यूज एस टाइम्स गुड्स सर्विसेज इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ विच द यूज ऑफ द ट्रेडमार्क इज बींग परमिटेड एंड टाइम्स द टर्म ऑफ द लाइसेंस द रजिस्ट्रार इज द फाइनल ऑथॉरिटी फॉर ग्रांटिंग द स्टेटस ऑफ रजिस्टर्ड यूजर्स वंस द कंडीशन प्रिस्क्राइब्ड अंडर सेक्शन फोर्टी नाइन वन हैव बीन कॉम्प्लाइड विथ द रजिस्ट्रार इज ड्यूटी बाउंड टू रजिस्टर द लाइसेंसी एज रजिस्टर्ड यूजर 4.4.3 वेरिएशन और कैंसिलेशन ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन एज रजिस्टर्ड यूजर द रजिस्ट्रार हैज द पावर टू वेरी और कैंसिल द रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ रजिस्टर्ड यूजर इन अकॉर्डेंस विद सेक्शन 50 ऑफ द ट्रेडमार्क्स एक्ट व्हिच इज रिप्रोड्यूस्ड बिलो 50 पावर ऑफ रजिस्ट्रार फॉर वेरिएशन और कैंसिलेशन ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन एज रजिस्टर्ड यूजर वन विदाउट प्रेजुडिस टू द प्रोविजंस ऑफ सेक्शन फिफ्टी The registration of a person as registered user A dot may be varied by the registrar as regards the goods or services in respect of which it has effect on the application in writing in the prescribed manner of registered proprietor of trademark comma B may be cancelled by the registrar on the application in writing in the FE prescribed manner of registered proprietor or of the registered user. or of any other registered user of the trademark c may be cancelled by the registrar on the application in writing in the prescribed manner of any person on any of the following grounds namely dash i that the registered user has used the trademark otherwise than in accordance with the agreement under clause a of subsection one of section 49 or in such way as to cause or to be likely to cause deception or confusion to that the proprietor or the registered user misrepresented or failed to disclose some fact material to the application for registration which if accurately represented or disclosed would not have justified the registration of the registered user 3 that the circumstances have changed since the date of registration in such a way that at the date of such application for cancellation they would not have justified registration of the registered user for that the registration ought not to have been effected having regard to rights vested in the applicant by virtue of a contract in the performance of which he is interested d may be cancelled by the registrar on his own motion or on the application in writing in the prescribed manner by any person on the ground that any stipulation in the agreement between the registered proprietor and the registered user regarding the quality of goods or services in relation to which the trademark is to be used is either not being enforced or is not being complied with e may be cancelled by the registrar in respect of any goods or services in relation to which the trademark is no longer registered to the registrar shall issue notice in the prescribed manner in respect of every application under this section to the registered proprietor and each registered user not being the applicant of the trademark 3 the procedure for cancelling a registration shall be such as may be prescribed provided that before cancelling of registration the registered proprietor shall be given a reasonable opportunity of being heard on an application by the registered proprietor the registrar can vary the registration of the registered user in respect of the goods services or in respect of any condition subject to which the registration has been granted such conditions of use would also include the duration or term of use which can be varied by the registrar thereby bringing about a renewal of the license cancellation of the registration as registered user can be effected by the registrar on an application by the registered user or the registered proprietor or by any other person or on his own motion in accordance dot with section 50 4.4.4 scope of trademark licensing there are certain conditions which the trademarks act 1999 has laid down for the purpose of licensing 
licensing is the result of a contract and the contract has to be in writing though a contract of trademark license has to be in writing the law prescribes no specific form for making such a contract there is no fixed term for the grant of license under the trademarks act and the same is dependent on the terms of license contract entered into between the licensor and the licensee so licensing may be for a particular period of time or it may be forever a licensee has no right to continue using the licensed trademark beyond the term of license or after the license has been cancelled or revoked the territorial limits within which the licensed trademark must be used by the licensee have to be determined by the parties to the license contract the territorial scope is however limited to the territorial scope of the registered trademark so it cannot be broader than the territorial scope of the trademark but it could be narrower the use by a licensee must comply with any conditions or restrictions to which the registration of licensed trademark is subject otherwise the registrar has the power to cancel the registration of license on an application by any person further the use by the licensee is subject to the license contract which may include such conditions as manufacturing processes marketing methodology branding style promotional expenditure advertising domains after sale services policing the mark etc 4.4.5 quality control by licensor over use of mark by licensee quality control by the proprietor of trademark over the use of the licensed mark is an independent requirement both under common law and statutory law as to trademarks under this requirement the licensor is required to control the quality of the products services of the licensee quality control does not mean that the licensee has to achieve the best possible quality standards there is no definition of quality control in the trademarks act 1999 the act only requires quality control and leaves it completely undefined beyond that requirement as per general practice of trade quality control could be achieved in the following manners or by specification of formulae standards methods directions instructions etc to be followed by the licensee or by inspection of manufacturing processes facilities products packagings services advertising etc of the licensee or by analyzing the samples of the licensee's products control does not mean that the licensor must always be physically present at the business premises of the licensee and conduct all possible inspections the critical point here is that the licensor must orchestrate or provide methods for assuring himself that the goods or services are of quality that the mark signifies to the public that they have licensor's obligation is simply to exercise reasonable control without the quality control requirement unscrupulous licensors or licensees could change product quality and take advantage of unwary consumers the consequences of lack of quality control by the proprietor is that without a provision as to quality control the license contract will not be registered by the registrar under the trademarks act the grant of registration as registered user is subject to the exercise of proper control by the registered proprietor over the use of the mark by the registered user the act requires that the licensor must furnish an affidavit indicating the relationship existing or proposed between the registered proprietor and the proposed registered user including particulars showing the degree of control by the proprietor over the permitted use which their relationship will confer further it is not enough to simply write such terms into the license and leave it at that it is incumbent upon the proprietor to enforce proper quality control as per the contract over the use of licensed trademark if the proprietor fails to do so the registrar either on his own motion or on an application by any person 
may cancel the registration of the license agreement. The absence of quality control could also bring into question the very validity of the trademark. This is because in the absence of quality control the trademark ceases to perform its essential function as an identifier of source of goods. The trademark then could be said to be deceptive, misleading or generic, in these situations the mark is open to be revoked. Section 57, 1 of that states, power to cancel or vary registration and to rectify the register on application made in the prescribed manner to the appellate board or to the registrar by any person aggrieved, the tribunal may make such order as it may think fit for cancelling or varying the registration of a trademark on the ground of any contravention or failure to observe a condition entered on the register in relation thereto 4.5 Assignment of Trademarks Assignment of trademarks may be discussed in relation to registered trademarks and unregistered trademarks. As per Section 2, 1, B. of Trademarks Act, 1999, an assignment of a trademark has to be in writing. That means in India the dot trademark law recognizes only written contracts for the purposes of assignment in respect of both registered and unregistered trademarks. Though a contract of assignment has to be in writing, the law prescribes no specific form for making such a contract. The form and manner is, therefore, left to be decided by the parties. The simplest kind of assignment is that of the whole of a trademark and all interests in it, but dot it is not the only possibility. The Trademarks Act allows for partial assignments as well, which may be limited so as to apply to only some of the goods or services for which the mark is registered. There is also a possibility to split up the mark and assign it territorially with some restrictions, comma, as per the Trademarks Act, the trademark dot and goodwill of a business need not necessarily be assigned simultaneously. Dot, however, the vast majority of assignments include the transfer of goodwill. There is usually a specific reason if goodwill is omitted, frequently taxation or price. If the goodwill is simply left to atrophy in the hands of the assigner of the trademark, the assignee is likely, in practical terms, to gain the benefit of it. If that is so, it is preferable to assign it in a formal sense as well. The proprietor of a registered trademark could obtain a certificate as to the validity or invalidity of the proposed assignment by submitting to the registrar a statement setting out the circumstances of assignment. The certificate so issued by the registrar is subject to appeal and unless it is shown that it was obtained by fraud or misrepresentation, it is conclusive as to the validity or invalidity of the assignment. The assignee of a registered trademark has to make an application to the registrar together with proof of his title to the assigned trademark in accordance with Section 45 of the Trademarks Act which is reproduced below, Registration of Assignments and Transmissions. 1. Where a person becomes entitled by assignment or transmission to a registered trademark, he shall apply in the prescribed manner to the registrar to register his title, and the registrar shall on receipt of the application and on proof of title to his satisfaction, register him as the proprietor of the trademark in respect of the goods or services in respect of which the assignment or transmission has effect and shall cause particulars of the assignment or transmission to be entered. On the register Provided that where the validity of an assignment or transmission is in dispute between the parties, the registrar may refuse to register the assignment or transmission until the rights of parties have been determined by a competent court upon application by the assignee and satisfactio tilde as to proof of his title. The registrar is bound to register him as the proprietor of trademark and make a recordal of particulars of the assignment. And tilde p. 
application for registration of assignment was treated as abated as the applicant did not respond to the registrar's objections. Forward Auto Industries v. Brakes International, 1999 PT 787.0 Such registration by the assignee is compulsory in the light of Section 45 E to 10 D. The Act which is as follows, except for the purpose of an application before the registrar under subsection 1 or an appeal from an order thereon or an application under sections or an appeal from an order thereon, a document or instrument in respect of which no entry has been made in the register in accordance with subsection 1 shall not be admitted in evidence by the registrar or the appellate board or any court in proof of title to the trademark by assignment or transmission unless the registrar or the appellate board or the court, as the case may be, otherwise directs. An unregistered trademark can be assigned with or without the goodwill of the firm. But if an BM8 tilde fitted trademark is assigned without goodwill, the assignee will get no rights to enforce it without either building his goodwill around the mark or registering the mark. This is because in the absence of goodwill no action for passing off will lie. The assignment of an unregistered trademark is subject to the same restrictions as those for a registered trademark in order to avoid the creation of multiple exclusive rights 4.6 Business Dimensions of Trademark Licensing Trademark licensing is the basis of numerous business practices and in many of these practices licensing of trademarks is hybridized with licensing of other tools of intellectual property. The business practices potentially involving a trademark license are technology transfer, franchising, character merchandising and Personality Merchandising are 4.6.1 Technology Transfer Trademark licenses play an important role in the transfer of technology between partners, whether they are in developed or developing countries. Naturally, for developing countries in particular they play an especially important role. They are not normally simple trademark licenses, but general contracts including the licensing of patents, trademarks, know-how and possibly other intellectual property, rights, as well as technical assistance to be given to the licensee. These contracts are a key factor in the economic development of developing countries and are usually characterized by the transfer of technology, the creation of jobs and the Use of local raw materials, often a licensor would wish to restrict how a licensee may use the licensed technology. A technology transfer license may include the right or obligation to use a trademark along with rights to make, use, sell, advertise, distribute, added or dot import a technology which is protected by patents and trade secrets. This amounts to limit the exploitation of the licensed technology in the hands of the licensee, it dot is the practice of many proprietors of technology to refuse any technology transfer in case the product is not sold under the trademark belonging to them, such a kind of technology transfer which is necessarily tied to trademarks can keep the licensee dependent in the licensor forever. That means, even when the patents protecting the technology have expired and the trade secrets are no longer secrets, the licensee will have no market of his own in the absence of his own trademark. The licensee, on his part, may also require using the trademark of the licensor because he may not have a competing brand to market the product times 4.6 point to franchising, Franchising is familiar to most consumers and they are also familiar with the results of franchising. The most widely known results of franchising appear to be fast food restaurants, hotels or cosmetic retail shops. Franchising extends, however, to industries as diverse as the hiring of formal wear. Schools and dentistry In short, 
it may apply to any economic activity for which a system can be developed for the manufacture, processing and or distribution of goods or the rendering of services. It is this system that is the subject matter of franchising in developed market economy countries. The sale of goods and services through franchising has grown remarkably since the 1950s and can account for a very large proportion of all retail sales in certain countries including India. This rapid growth and success of franchising has been attributed to a number of factors the most basic one being perhaps that franchising combines the depth of knowledge and the strength of one entity. The franchiser, with the entrepreneurial spirit of a businessman, the franchisee, franchising could be described as an arrangement whereby one person, i.e. franchiser, who has developed a system for conducting a particular business, allows another person, the franchisee, to use that system in accordance with the prescriptions of the franchiser in exchange for compensation. The relationship is a continuing one as the franchisee operates in accordance with standards and practices established and monitored by the franchiser and with his continuing assistance and support. The franchised system is a package comprising intellectual property rights relating to one or more marks. Trade names, industrial designs, inventions and works protected by copyright together with relevant know-how and trade secrets to be exploited for the sale of goods or the provision of services to end users. Trademark licensing is at the core of any franchising relationship and can blend almost imperceptibly into franchising which essentially combines trademark license with the provision of marketing or promotional assistance and controls over the manufacturing methods employed by the franchisee franchising relationship could be of various kinds one of them is business format franchising this broad category of course comprises a number of variations such variations may consist of changes in the nature of the franchised system the scope and content of the license granted, the nature or object of the ongoing relationship and the scope and degree of supervision exercised by the franchiser over the manner in which the franchise is exercised, a business format type of franchise has been described as being characterized by an ongoing business relationship between franchiser and franchisee that includes not only the product, service and trademark but the entire business format itself a marketing strategy and plan. Operating manuals and standards, quality control, and continued two-way communications, franchises could be categorized into three principal TYP.ES on the basis of their function, processing franchises, distribution franchises, and service franchises. In a processing franchise, the franchiser supplies an essential ingredient or technical knowledge to a processor or manufa tilde tura. The franchiser will grant the franchisee authorization to manufacture and sell products under the marks of the franchiser. In certain instances, the franchisee may further be licensed to use trade secret information or patented technology held by the franchiser apart from which he may be provided with training and or information relating to the marketing, distribution and servicing of the product. Such franchises are common, for example, in the restaurant and fast food industry. In a service franchise, the franchiser develops a certain service which is to be rendered by the franchisee under the terms of the franchise agreement to his customers. An example of a Service franchise would be one involving the provision of automobile tuning or repair services or the provision of credit card services. In a distribution franchise, the franchiser manufactures the product and sells it to the franchisees. The franchisees then sell the products to customers under the franchiser's trademark in their own geographical areas. For example, the distribution of automobile fuel, 
cosmetics or consumer electronics can be carried out under franchises, various structures could be chosen for carrying out franchising. Making a choice between the different possible structures depends very much on the particular circumstances of the franchiser and the franchisee and the nature of the FR Tilden Chise. Important structures are unit franchising, territorial franchising, franchise tilde development and master franchise. Unit franchising is the most straightforward way in which franchising can be carried out because it involves direct relations between the franchiser and the franchisee whereby the franchiser enters into a franchise agreement directly with the franchisee. In domestic situations where the franchiser and franchisee are in the same country unit franchising is the most commonly used structure. Franchise agreements which aim at covering a substantial territory or geographical area by setting up simultaneously or successively a number of units, shops or outlets over an agreed period of time may be referred to as territorial franchising. Two forms of territorial franchises are the Franchise Developer Agreement and the Master Franchise Agreement. A Franchise Developer Agreement links the franchiser directly with the franchisee, who is expected to open and operate several units. This franchise will include a development agreement whereby the franchisee is required to develop the assigned territory by establishing a number of franchise units or outlets which he will usually own directly. In this case, the franchisee will not sub-franchise out to dot third parties. Generally, this contract will include a schedule tilde setting out the time frame for establishing the franchise units and developing the assigned territory. The individual units opened by the franchisee under this type of structure would not have independent legal standing and could be divisions or branches of the franchisee's enterprise. In a master franchise agreement, the franchiser grants another party, usually called the master franchisee, rights for a given geographical area. The master franchisee is given the right by the franchiser to grant franchises to third parties, usually called sub-franchisees, to exploit fully the potential business opportunities in the larger geographical area. It may be agreed that some of those sub-franchisees will run more than one franchise unit, in which case the sub-franchise agreement is called a multi-unit franchise. 4.6.3 Character Merchandising Character merchandising refers to the licensing of characters such as words, names, titles, symbols, designs, fictional characters, college insignia, logos of, sports teams, etc. for use in association with products or services. The term character covers both fictional humans, for example, Krish, Tarzan or Lames, Bond, and non-humans, for example, Donald Duck or Bugs Bunny. Character merchandising is the secondary exploitation of the character by the owner of a fictional character. Such secondary exploitation will be entirely a different way of using the character than its primary use or activity, though it will be dependent on such primary use or activity in a way that without the primary use the secondary is impossible. Character merchandising involves the licenses relating to copyright, trademarks, and industrial designs. In case of unauthorized use of characters, recourse could be made to any of the following laws depending on individual protection status of the character in question. It is important to bear in mind that each such form of protection has its own limitations and should a dispute go to court. The parties would naturally like to rely on all the tools which support their cause the characters that are subject to merchandising are copyright works. Character Merchandising is concerned with matter originating from copyright-protected works in particular films, television serials and literary and artistic works. Therefore, copyright licensing is required for character merchandising. Industrial design protection is mainly relevant for cartoon characters represented in the 
form of aesthetic designs for three-dimensional articles which mainly belong to the toy and jewelry fields. Prominent examples include dolls, robots, puppets, action figures, brooches, pins, etc. which generally originate in cartoons but sometimes in real persons as well. Therefore, licensing of industrial designs is involved in merchandising of such characters which are to be used for giving shape to articles. Trademark is perhaps the most important form of intellectual property implicated in character merchandising. Subject to the mark fulfilling the conditions of registrability, most of the essential features of a character can be subjected to trademark protection. The specific rendering of a character, the names of fictional characters like Tarzan, Batman, Krish, their appearance in the form of drawings or photographs, an organization's logo, etc. can be registered as trademarks. 4.6.4 Personality Merchandising The practice of identifying various goods and services with a famous personality so as to increase their marketability is what personality merchandising is all about. In personality merchandising, the celebrity licenses his persona to be used in connection with certain goods or services so as to enhance their image in the estimation of the consuming public. The term persona refers to those elements or characteristics which make up a person's outward being and by which third parties identify an individual and it may include a person's name, abbreviated name, nickname, pseudonym, signatures, image, voice, likeness, lookalikes, caricatures, gestures, distinctive appearances, characteristic phrases, characteristic dress, etc. Films, music, Media, sports and business are generally the sources where real persons take up a secondary role as merchandisers of their personalities in personality merchandising laws such as privacy, defamation, trademark, copyright and unfair competition are implicated. In case of unauthorized use of a celebrity's persona, recourse could be made to any of these laws depending on the facts of the case. A celebrity's persona acquires trademark significance. Subject to the requirements of registration, certain attributes of a person may be subject to trademark registration. For example, the name, the signatures, the appearance, etc. can be registered as trademarks. If anyone wants to use the persona of a celebrity, which is subject to trademark protection, he has to obtain a trademark license. Certain aspects of persona of a person are subject to copyright protection as well. Though name of a person is not subject to copyright protection, but his signatures are protected as an artistic work together with his photograph, image and caricatures. Certain characteristic phrases which go to form the persona of an individual may also be protected as literary works. Anyone who wishes to use the persona of somebody in connection with a product or service has to obtain consent or license of endorsement from that person. Therefore, the licensee, in order to commercially exploit the persona of a personality, must obtain a license with respect of the relevant intellectual property, rights together with a release and waiver of all claims, such as invasion of the right to privacy and defamation that the licensor could have brought against the licensee but for the license. Whatever right is transferred, should a dispute arise, the basis would be the use of the plaintiff's identity for the defendant's advantage. 4.7 Summary Times assignment and licensing are two forms of transfer whereby the proprietor of a trademark can invite others point to exploit his trademark. Times contract is the means by which a license or assignment is effected. Times in a license there is no transfer of proprietary interest because by licensing the owner retains ownership to the rights to that. Intellectual property and thus retains proprietary control over it. Licenses can be exclusive or non-exclusive. In the case of an exclusive license, 
the trademark proprietor is not allowed to license the mark to any other person in the territory and cannot even use the mark himself in the case of a non-exclusive license, of course, the proprietor may use the mark himself and even allow others to use it times the term assignment is defined as a transfer or making over to another of the whole of any property, real or personal, in possession or in action, or of any estate or right therein, times where the license contract is registered under the Trademarks Act, the licensee is known as registered user. Registration of a licensee as a registered user is not compulsory under the Act. Times through licensing the licensor can expand the territory in which the mark is used and hence become eligible for expanded protection, times quality control by the proprietor of trademark over the use of the licensed mark is an independent requirement both under common law and statutory law as to trademarks. Under this requirement the licensor is required to Control the quality of the products services of the licensee times trademark licensing is the basis of numerous business practices such as technology transfer, franchising, character merchandising and personality merchandising. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video with next chapter.